So hey guys, uh, this is another video. It kind of goes with the right hand rule, but this is just a, an example of a couple of questions where we're actually going to use the equation to try and like find a solution, QVB sine theta, where we're going to try and find a solution to a problem. So a couple of real easy ones. Uh, this one, we got a question about protons. So these are kind of standard. If you're in a physics class, you're going to see a problem just like this. And it tells us that a proton moves at a right angle to a magnetic field of 0.1 Tesla. So in this problem, we've got this. We've got a proton that is moving at a right angle. So it doesn't matter how I draw it, but I need to know that this is at a right angle. So that just tells me that my angle is 90 degrees. So we've got a velocity, it says. And how about this? You should probably already pause and work this one without me. And then come back and check and see if you've got the right answer. So velocity is 2 times 10 to the 7, so a high-speed uh, proton. And it's at a right angle to a magnetic field with a strength of 0 0.10 Tesla. So we've got that. Now it says find the acceleration. So look at what it asks you to find. It says find the acceleration of the proton. Uh, Mr. Cole, I thought this was a QVB. By the way, a lot of times you'll see people just write QVB because if you know that the angle is 90 degrees and the sine of 90 is 1, so writing the whole QVB sine theta is a little bit extreme. It's not hardly necessary. And so all we have to do at this point is go back in. Again, this is algebra-based. If you were in the calculus class right now, it would give you two vectors like i, j, k. And you would go in and do a cross product. And if you're, you're in physics by now and you don't know how to do a cross product, you're in trouble. But if you do get stuck, I've got other videos where I do cross products, so that shouldn't be a bad thing. So anyway, let's go back to this algebra-based formula. But wait a minute, it said acceleration is what it asked for. Oh, goodness, how am I going to find that? Well, let's go back to when you first learned about force. It's what? F equals ma. So all we have to do to solve this problem is say ma is equal to qvb. So it's a very nice, pretty little formula. If we want to find acceleration, all we'd have to do is qvb divided by m and that's it and we could get our answer uh you would have to know the charge of an electron well you should have that memorized by now 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb uh, let's see velocity it said was 2 times 10 to the 7 meters per second and it told us the magnetic field 0 0.10 tesla if it tried giving you gauss just remember that one Tesla is equal to 10,000 Gauss. So if they tried to trick you up with that unit, just make sure you do a conversion before you do this. Divide by the mass of a proton, which you really should also have memorized at some point. 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And so all we have to do is plug that in, and we'll just do it real quick for the sake of making sure you got the right answer if you tried this on your own. So 1.610 to the negative 19. And, ooh, I've got a boo-boo. I hit a wrong button in mine. Times 10 to the negative 19 times 2, 10 to the 7 times 0.1 divided by 1.67 10 to the negative it's exciting television right here can't take my eyes off of it and so it'd be one wow one acceleration 1.9 the thing disappeared 1.9 times 10 to the 14 meters per second square uh, what I would almost like to do would be to break these units down and force you to prove where the meters per second square came from. Ooh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? All right, we'll just kind of move on. Uh, let's do one other example real quick. Uh, this is a very common one because what happens, and we didn't talk about this, 
But let's say you had a magnetic field going into the page. We did this in our right-hand rule video. A very cool thing happens when the charged particle, let's say you had a charged particle. The old APB exam used to love these questions. When the charged particles would come in here, moving to the right, well, you would have to sit here and look on this. And I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it a little bit lower. So let's say that you had a proton entering into with a velocity in that direction. Do your right-hand rule. This is going away from you. Aim your fingers in the page. Turn your fingers to the right. You would get a force this way. Well, the cool thing is that would bend your particle. In other words, the force would cause it to turn. Well, now the velocity is this way. Well, the force goes that way which causes it to bend even more. And then you've got, do you notice the path the particle starts taking as it's in the field? You end up with a circular path. So when a charged particle enters a field, it'll end up with some radius r. And so a very common thing is to do this. Take a moment, flash back to what centripetal force is. Centripetal force was mv squared over r. So kind of like in the other example where we said ma equals qvb, all we're going to do to do this problem is set it up like this and say that mv squared over r equals qvb. And so what this problem wants you to do is find the direction and strength <coughs> of the magnetic field. So all we've got to do is try and figure this out. We may have to go back and read it to actually figure out the whole direction thing. Uh, we'll do that in a second. We'll figure out the direction in a second. That's why it gave us this clockwise stuff, and I didn't read that so much. So it says find the strength of the magnetic field. So all we're going to do is Q, V, and R and that's going to divide into mv square. Oh, and goodness, v cancels square, so we end up with mv over qr. And if somebody really wanted to be nitpicky with you, they might even do a trick problem where they gave you the momentum of the object. And then look at what would be cool. We could say that the momentum of the, what have we got, an electron? Nope, positive. So that would be an interesting way of writing it, saying that the momentum of the particle divided by the charge times radius is equal to the magnetic field. But anyway, the only physics we did was really coming back to here. So this would be an easy problem. The mass, it said, was 6.68 .6 times 10 to the negative 27 times velocity... 1 times 10 to the 4. Mr. Cole, you're not writing your units. Yeah, I know. It's because I don't have room to do it. And we're dividing that by, what did it say we got? Singly charged, singularly charged positive ion. That means it's got the charge of an electron. A single charge. Remember, the basic unit of charge is that of the electron. So that means this object has a 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb charge. And the 3 centimeters, you'd have to change to 0 0.03 meters. Now, I would hope at this point, if you're watching a video like this, you can punch this into a calculator and get the correct answer. So I'm not going to do it. Uh, you can do that. But I am going to do this. Let's go back and solve for this direction, it says. It says that da, 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 a particle moves clockwise in a circular path. So it says it's moving clockwise. So the particle is making a circle in this direction, which means the force has to be directed towards the center of the circle. So which direction is the magnetic field? So take a moment and do your right-hand rule. Well, look at this moment. Let's say right there. At that moment, you had a velocity in that direction, a force in that direction, so do the right-hand rule. We haven't done it like this. Your palm needs to be aimed towards the center of the circle. Your thumb needs to be pointed in the direction of the velocity. Oh my goodness, are you about to contort your hand? Aim your palm at your face. Aim your thumb, uh, aim your thumb in the direction of the velocity. Which directions are your fingers pointing right now? 
you probably are about to break your wrist because your finger should literally be pointing at your face. So the magnetic field is represented by dots. It means the magnetic field is coming out of the page, and that is what would make this clockwise pattern happen. So anyway, that's a couple of basic examples of problems just in case you need to do. Anyway, take it easy. Catch you later.